now in its seventh year, the New Jersey Fly Fisherman of the Year event is really starting to hit its stride. Most of the Trout Unlimited chapters and other associations and organizations that send a representative to compete have the routine down fairly well. Meet in the barn of the Raritt Inn just slightly after O Yon 100. Load up on coffee and performance enhancing carbs. Listen intently while Bill Asdell, the inn's owner, and Jim Holland from Shannon's Fly and Tackle go over the rules and assign the morning beats. Then head outside, gear up, and give anglers the last bit of coaching and encouragement. Actually, it's far from the last bit they'll get throughout the day. As is so often the case, the morning rounds are the tough ones. Cold temperatures combined with this year's low flow and super clean water conditions tend to leave trout not only lethargic, but spooky and picky as well. The few fish that did make it to the net were hard won, and a fair bit of success or failure could be attributed to which beats the anglers drew. Pattern selection was also critical, with the nod going to, let's say, less than traditional flies. No, fishing wasn't hot and heavy, but I'm sure most would agree, snagging a leaf or two during your drift is far more fun than raking them into piles at home. With the morning rounds mercifully over, everyone headed back to the inn in the Shannon Shack for burgers and dogs on the grill. After the crowd was well fed and properly hydrated, Bill Asdell and Jim Holland called up the three top anglers from the morning rounds. Ed Sinning from Fred Burroughs TU, Jonathan Eng from Hackle Barney, and Diana Peck from Ridge and Valley. Good morning, everybody. What did you do this morning? Uh, I fished a fly that Warren Weglinski tied for me. It was a um, little egg little egg pattern, salmon colored, kind of 14 with a um, just a little red tail on it. Mop fly with, uh, right. with a little egg and uh, legs. Um, I used Woo! the Sperminator today that Frank tied for me. These three would be moving on to compete for the New Jersey Fly Fisherman of the Year title in the afternoon. Bill also introduced Dave McKenna from Douglas Outdoors, who was kind enough to bring along a large selection of the company's premium fly rods for everyone to try. Anglers and guests got to cast everything from a 6'6 full flex three weight to a 13 foot eight weight spay rod. Dick Kondak from G. Loomis also showed up with an equally impressive selection of rods, including a few samples from the new Asquith series. All I can say is wow. A special thanks to both Dave and Dick for adding a lot to a fun afternoon. All too quickly, the three competing anglers were sent back out on the water for the afternoon rounds. By this point, both the air temperature and the fishing had warmed up considerably, and all three anglers really took advantage. It seems like every year the finals are a back and forth battle, and this year was no exception. All three anglers had selected subsurface patterns and mainly fished them deep below indicators. So when a full-blown midge hatch went off right in front of them, the best they could do was just watch and try not to let it affect their concentration. Nerves really come into play during this part of the competition and all performed extraordinarily well under the pressure. In the end, however, it was Jonathan Eng from Hackle Barney who came up the winner. Jonathan fished with the same fly pattern in the afternoon as he had in the morning. Now's when you traditional anglers may want to look away. Jonathan's winning fly pattern was a seriously pimped out mop fly. Although Theodore Gordon is probably turning over in his grave, it's hard to argue with success. With everyone off the water, cleaned up a bit and back at the barn, it was time to relax and enjoy some hors d'oeuvres and maybe an adult beverage or two. Various raffles and silent auctions had everyone ooing and eyeing and frantically dropping tickets into buckets and jotting down bids. At the same time, a few were enjoying the warmth of the inn's new fire pit. Others still participated in the always fun distance casting contest. These included last year's winner, Dee Kelly, from Casting for Recovery, 
Shannon's owner Jim Holland, and Joe Fox from Daddy Flies, who came all the way down from Roscoe, New York to show the rest of the field how it's done. As is tradition, the annual New Jersey Council of Trout Unlimited Dinner follows the one fly competition, and once again, it didn't disappoint. A wide selection of seriously tasty food was enjoyed by everyone in attendance. Bill Kibler of Raritan Headwaters gave an extremely informative yet somewhat terrifying presentation about the region's continuing drought and its effect on our water supply and stream health. In a nutshell, pray for rain. New Jersey Council Chair Rich Thomas presented the Council's Lifetime Achievement Award to an extremely deserving August Goodmanson. If you've never met August, you need to. He's one of those guys whose enthusiasm for our sport and the preservation of its resources knows no bounds. The only questions were, what took so long for him to get this award? And what on earth is he gonna do with a tennis racket? I think he'll put it to good use. Brothers in Tweed, Jim Holland and Joe Fox, shook hands when Jim presented Joe with a fly line for winning the distance casting contest. And finally, Jim presented Jonathan Eng with the 2016 New Jersey Fly Fisherman of the Year trophy, as well as a beautiful hardy fly reel for his efforts. Congratulations, Jonathan, and we look forward to seeing everyone at next year's event.